Hi, this is Stephanie of Telly Bean Knits, and today I'm going to show you how to work elongated stitches and the broomstick stitch, which creates this really pretty little cluster of stitches, and I think you're going to have a fun time doing it. Okay, so let's start with the elongated stitch. You'll just need to work to the point in your pattern that calls for your elongated stitch. I'm going to work up to where I'm ready for my stitches. For this pattern, we're going to work five elongated stitches over the next five stitches. So to work an elongated stitch, you will insert your right hand needle knitwise into the first stitch on your left hand needle. You're going to wrap your yarn as if to knit three times. So I've done one wrap, two, and three. Three. And you probably notice that I am catching those stitches with my index finger on my right hand. And then I'm going to bring those stitches through and drop that stitch off of the left hand needle. You can see one, two, three stitches. Let me show you that a few more times. Insert knitwise. One, two, three. And again, insert knitwise. One, two, three. And the last time, insert knitwise, one, two, three. And I've worked five elongated stitches. Each elongated stitch has three wraps per stitch. Now to set up so that I can show you a few more broomstick stitches, I'm gonna work a few of those quickly. You can see that once you figure out how to do this, it is not a complicated stitch to work. I like to double check that I've gotten the correct number of stitches on my needle. Looks like I need one more for that broomstick stitch. It does eat up yarn fairly quickly, so keep an eye on your yardage. It's such a fun stitch to knit. And I have been using a lot of elongated stitches in my knitting this year. Okay. Just gonna double check. All right, now I have elongated stitches on this needle. I have quite a few. I have 15 elongated stitches so that I can show you three broomstick stitches on my next wrong side row. And you'll see that it really loads up your needles whenever you've worked a lot of elongated stitches. Now we aren't going to count any of those elongated stitches as increases for the purposes of this pattern um, because you're going to be dropping those extra loops that you created on your next row. So let's flip our work so that we're ready for a wrong side row. And we are going to work up to our first set of elongated stitches. And you may find that because the tension is a little different on an elongated stitch, you're gonna to have to give that like a gentle push to get it over um, the bump in your needle. If you do that, make sure that you hold the tip of your left hand needle so that when you give those a little bump to help them come closer to the end of your needle, you don't accidentally push them all off the end of the needle. Okay, so let me work up to those first elongated stitches. Now, you can see that I have my first set of elongated stitches here on the needle, and I'm ready to work my first broomstick stitch. To work that broomstick stitch, I'm gonna bring my yarn between my needles to the front of my work, and I'm going to slip five stitches off of my left-hand needle purlwise, so I'm not trying to change the orientation of the stitch, and I'm going to drop those extra loops when I do so. One, I'm gonna grab that with my right finger, because once you have an elongated stitch on your needles, it is pretty loose, so you're gonna to wanna to keep a hold of it. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I have five elongated stitches on my right hand needle. Now, I'm gonna hold onto those with my index finger. You really just need to hold onto that first one on the right hand needle. And I'm going to bring my yarn to the back of my work. I can actually let it drop. I don't need to have it in my hand the whole time. Now, I'm going to slip those same five elongated stitches, keeping them in the same order, back to my left hand needle. And now, I'm going to bring 
my working yarn back between my needles to the front of my work. And you can see I've wrapped those elongated stitches with my working yarn, but I haven't actually knit or purled into any of those stitches. I'm going to do that once more. I'm going to slip all five stitches to my right hand needle. I'm going to bring my working yarn to the front of my work, and then I'm going to slip all five stitches back to my left hand needle. I'm going to bring my working yarn back to the front of my work. And then I'm going to, one final time, slip all five elongated stitches back to my right hand needle. Now, in my pattern, there's one stitch in between each of the broomstick stitches. And for that next stitch, which is a knit stitch, I need to bring my yarn to the back of my work and knit that stitch. And I wanna show you what the tension on that broomstick stitch looks like. You can see there's a large gap between the broomstick stitch and the previous stitch. And then also there's a gap between the next stitch. You don't need to pull that yarn really tight. Actually, if you pull it tight, you're gonna create so much tension in your work that you'll see some puckering. So you're gonna to wanna to keep those nice and loose. And when you work across that next row, you'll see that it'll spread these stitches out and it'll help to fill in those gaps. And you won't wanna fill in the gaps completely because those gaps create really pretty open work. So let me show you that one more time. So first thing I'm gonna do is bring my working yarn to the front of my work and I'm ready for my next broomstick stitch. I'm going to slip the first five stitches purlwise off of my left hand needle while I drop the additional wraps. to create five elongated stitches. Now I'm going to bring my working yarn back to the back of my work. I'm going to slip those stitches to my left hand needle. I'm going to bring my yarn between my needles back to the front of my work. Slip those stitches again. Bring my working yarn to the back of my work. Slip those stitches again bring the yarn to the front of my work. Slip all five stitches back to my right hand needle and I have wrapped, you can see there are two wraps on the right side of my work. I've wrapped that yarn and now I'm ready to knit the next stitch. and I have created another broomstick stitch. Let's do that once more, since it's a pretty fun little stitch. Bring the yarn to the front of my work, slip those stitches, all five, dropping those extra wraps. Okay, bring my yarn to the back of my work, slip all five stitches to my left hand needle, bring my yarn between my needles to the front of my work, Slip those stitches back to my right hand needle, bring my working yarn to the back of my work, slip those stitches, bring my yarn to the front of my work, and then finally slip those stitches back to the back of my, or to the front of my work and back to my right hand needle. Now I'm ready to continue to knit. And let me show you how we work the next row. You can see there are some pretty big gaps between those stitches. Let me show you what it looks like once we come back to those stitches. I'm ready to work back across my stitches. And all I'm doing in this next row is knitting the stitches. I'm knitting across all those stitches. When I come to the broomstick stitch, I have those five elongated stitches on the needles. I'm just going to gently spread those out with my finger and I'm gonna knit into each one of those stitches. Gently spread those out and knit into those stitches. Just being careful to make sure they're staying in the right order that I want them on the needles and they haven't overlapped when I'm knitting those stitches. Last 
last one. And finish off the row. I just want to show you what those look like once you knit across them. You can see that knitting the stitches has really spread those stitches out and that the gaps that were happening on the previous row have really filled in once you've opened up your little broomstick. You can see the little clusters of stitches and how neatly and beautifully they lay on your needles. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching.